I'm Nick Gutierrez. I'm the Structural Coordinator here at Bosque Redondo Memorial at Fort Sumner Historic Sites in Fort Sumner, New Mexico. And today I'm going to talk about making your own cardboard loom and talking about weaving. And why weaving? Weaving is an important piece of the history of this site. Uh, the, the, uh, the site was a site, an internment site for both Navajo and Muscular Apache peoples. And when they brought the Navajo here, they, the Navajo brought with them their churro sheep, which they used for wool, and they brought their looms. And the looms they used to make uh, blankets and, and clothing, and so it's very, very important for them. So, um, when we have students come to the museum and for activities, we we'll often do this cardboard loom activity. And the students usually get, kiddos get a little bag like this, which includes a cardboard loom, some thread, and a few things, and we'll talk about that in a moment. So today I'm gonna to talk about how you make one of these. So, cardboard, you need cardboard. So when you get cardboard, you wanna make sure it's not real flimsy, you want it thick. See, this is a good thick piece of cardboard. It needs to be able to be sturdy and because you, you're going to be wrapping it with thread and weaving on it so you need it to be pretty good and sturdy something really thin won't hold up so i got some here i'll get these out of the way so other things that are important a ruler i have a crafting knife or exacto knife very useful pencil or in this case a pen all righty so when you get your cardboard, you can make it any shape you want, any size you want. Well, shape, rectangular, but size. You can make it like this one is a four inch. This is four inches, well, before actually four and a quarter inches by about five and a quarter inches. We can make it four by five, five by six. Um, the size isn't as important. Uh, you don't want to make it too large because that's going to be a lot of a lot of yarn. So anyway, this is about four by five. And once you got this cut out, now the next part. So to create the loom, we have got to create these little niches, these little cuts in the top. You notice this room is really close. The warp thread. This is called warp threads, and these are close together. And so I'll talk about that in a moment. How about that one? And the ones that we put in the little packets. You can see the warp through is a little further apart, but you still got to cut these little slits in the top and in the bottom, and you need them to be even. Okay, this would be up. This would be the right way up. So, what we want to do, and I find that very, uh, I like to use the centimeter side because it's much easier. And so, I lay it on here, and this is, it ends up about 11 centimeters. So, every centimeter I make a mark. Now, the marks, or the distance between when you cut this, it's really dependent. If you're using a really, 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 really thin thread, you want it closer together. If you're using a thick thread, you want it further apart. And about one centimeter works really well for just your normal yarn. So, mark both sides. And here comes the hard part. And this part, you might need some help. But I've got an X-Acto knife, and again, you can use a box cutter or a utility knife, something like that. Scissors don't work very well because you can't quite cut it. You're gonna be slicing, and so um, some kind of knife will work better. And again, it's very good, very important to have supervision, make sure somebody's watching, and a cutting board. I use this nice little cutting board because it helps because I don't want to cut the table. So, making sure I work away from myself instead of toward myself for safety, I'm going to cut. And I find a lot of times I don't go through. So this is where, and be very careful, you don't want to do it real close to your fingers here. You don't want to cut yourself. And you want the cuts to go down about a quarter of an inch. And the reason for that is will become clear in just a moment. So we want to do this on one side. And when you make all the cuts and make sure that it goes through on both sides. And 
We'll do that across the top and across the bottom. And the magic of video here. Voila. Okay, I did. I cheated. I did this beforehand. Now, once you get all the slits across the top and all the slits across the bottom, and now you're ready to put on thread. Now, what you're, this thread is going to go up and down is called a warp thread. And I'm just going to use this particular yarn here. And there's two ways to do it. Um, there's this way in which you have the thread on both sides. And um, you can then, you'll have the weaving on one side and then you'll uh, finish both the ends off and then cut it here and you'll have this fringe. Or you can do like this one and it doesn't have it on the back. So it just kind of goes up and around. So I'll show you both ways. If you're going to do like this up and, up and back, you're going to need tie a little uh, knot. Knots are important. Just some kind of little knot so it'll um, hold. And make sure you put the knot on the back. And then starting at the top, just work it in. And so you work it in there. And then if you're going to go up and around, you go up just like this. And this takes a little bit. Didn't go all the way through. And you'll go up and around. Okay, and that's for up and around. So you see it on this side and that side. Now, if you don't want to go all the way around, you can do more like kind of warp it like this one, which doesn't have it on the back. You just it's just a little different, but not terribly different. You start out with your knot, as you did here, but instead of going all the way around, you just go like that on the back. And then you go down, get down to here, and again, cut off. So either way, depends on if you want fringe, or if you just want a finished edge. And you can even on a finished edge, you can add fringe if you want to. And when you get to the end, I just tape it. Um, eventually you'll want to work it in in a different way, but for right now you just tape it. And there you have it. Your own cardboard loom. Now stay tuned and I'll show you how to start weaving on this cardboard loom. Thank you.